Okay, guys, let's make this happen. So from the perspective of the configuration, there's going to be some things that we need to do. Now, what I'm going to do, create here is I'm going to create that area that I described. And what we're going to do is we're going to create another set of loopbacks. Since I already have the loopback of 183122, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this one 2222-32. And we'll create a loopback on CSR3, which we will call 183133-32. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a configuration whereby we're going to place all of these interfaces encompassed in this circle in area 2. Now before I do that, I do want to take the opportunity to look at the contents of the OSPF database that's currently being generated in area 1. And I'm also, as a part of that process, going to remove the LSA that we described called the Type 2 LSA. But before I get rid of it, what I want to do is I want to, us to see what the table looks like. And that's demonstrable by typing show IP OSPF database and hitting enter. Now what we see here is exactly what I said that we would see. We have a link ID of 0001. The advertising router is 0001. And we can see the number of prefixes that are currently being advertised. Here we see the exact same thing. This is coming from R2 and we see it's advertising a link count of one. Now, if we think back to our drawing, when it comes to CSR2, it's only advertising a single interface in OSPF. Let's look at that. Remember the command that does that? Show IP OSPF interface brief. And we can see the only interface that is taking part in OSPF is G1. Now, I want that loopback interface. Show run interface L010. I want this loopback interface to take part in the protocol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say config t router OSPF1, and I'm going to use the network command to add it with specificity. So I'm going to say 1831220000 area 1. And now when I take a look at this output, I'll notice a change in the database for R, well, on R1 for R2, CSR2. So what I'm going to do is up arrow, and what we should see here is, is now it's actually advertising another link. Now, if I want to see the nature of those links, I can type show IP OSPF database and specify the link state advertisement number or name. This is a router link LSA, a type 1 LSA. This is a net link state LSA, which is a type 2 LSA. All I want to do is I'm going to say router, and what I want to do is I want to look at the prefix that is being advertised just from this device right here, R2. So I'm going to say advertising router 0002, and I'm going to hit enter, and we're going to see exactly what is being advertised. Notice the loopback, 183122, that I just added to the routing protocol, is being advertised as a slash 32. It is a host route because it is a loopback interface, and the system sees it as a stub. Remember, I said that the system, OSPF, will report any interface as a stub if that interface does not lead to another neighbor. And from the perspective of CSR1, we see that the link 10.1.12.1 is the designated router on that segment, and we see that the router interface on the other side is 10.1.12.2. That's this interface running right here, G1, on CSR2. And we see that it is listed as a transit network, which means it is actually connected to other OSPF speakers. Now, what would happen if I were to advertise or look at the database from R2's perspective? Show IP OSPF database. What we'll find here is, is that we see that R1 is actually advertising three prefixes. Now that's interesting. So let's take a look and see what prefixes or what interfaces are participating in OSPF on CSR3 or CSR1. Show IP OSPF interface brief. And we'll see we're running three interfaces. Notice it's running the 
OSPF process on G02. That's that interface that's going down. And it is actually generating three prefixes, one for each interface, and advertising them as part of its link count, just like I described earlier. So let's look at the show IP OSPF for the IP OSPF database router and I want to look at coming from the advertising router of 0001 and I want to look at the nature of those interfaces that are being advertised. Now notice how this is being reported. 183111 is the loopback interface and it's recorded as a stub. It's also being advertised as a slash 32 which is a native behavior inside of OSPF. All loopbacks by default will be advertised as slash 32 prefixes, even if they're not slash 32 prefixes, unless we overcome or bypass that default behavior. Notice this interface right here, or this prefix, 10.1.14.1. That's the interface running on G2. Notice it is being reported as a stub network. Again, it's being reported as a stub network because it is not connected to anything. So OSPF does not see it as a transit network whereby transit networks are going to be network interfaces that are going to be used to reach other OSPF speakers, whether they're in different areas or they're in the same area. So I wanted to make certain that we took the opportunity to look at this and look at it closely. Now, when I do a show IP OSPF database, what we're going to see here is, is the type 2 LSA, a net link state LSA. Now, Right now, I don't want to deal with these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to change that behavior. I want it to go away because the only thing I want to look at is going to be type 1 LSAs. We'll talk about type 2s when we talk about designated routers and backup designated routers. To get rid of it, I'm going to go to Gigabit Ethernet 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say IP OSPF Network. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the type of network. Well, what am I changing it from and what am I changing it to? Well, I can type do show IP OSPF interface G1 and hit enter. And what we'll see here is, is this interface is being recognized by OSPF as a broadcast interface. And broadcast interfaces will need to elect a designated router and a backup designated router, one of each, for every Ethernet segment that OSPF is running on. And in this instance, we see that we are the designated router. Our R1, uh, router ID 0001 is the DR on this segment. But I want to get rid of that process. Now remember, this happens on all broadcast type interfaces. And there are a lot of different interface types. But right now, we're only focusing on two. Broadcast, which needs a DR, and another broad interface type that doesn't. And since this is a single connection between R1 and R2, what I am going to do is I am going to make this a point-to-point -point link because it's an Ethernet segment pretending to be a serial link at this particular juncture. It's just a high-speed point-to-point connection, Ethernet WAN, if you'll excuse the term. So what I'll do is I'll do IP OSPF network point dash two dash point and change its overall type. Now, this is going to cause the segment to drop why? A network mismatch. Now, do I still have an adjacency as a part of this process? By typing show IP OSPF neighbor, I can determine whether or not I have an adjacency. And we see that I do indeed have an adjacency. It did not. It went down and it came back up because of that network type mismatch. And if I come over here and take a look at it from the other side, show IP OSPF neighbors. I do still have my neighbor relationship. But here's the problem. What we're going to see here is, is R1 looks at this interface as a point-to-point -point and does not elect a DR. Notice we've got this little blank line here. The adjacency is full, so the adjacency state machine has done its job, but I did not elect a designated router on this segment, and I am going to ignore a designated router on this segment. So the main thing that we're going to look at here is when I look at the, this from the perspective of R2, what we're going to see is, is R2 was the DR, but in the absence of the actual designated router, R2 should elect itself ultimately to be 
the actual DR on the segment. Now the problem is, is these network types are not compatible. So rather than sit here and wait for this process to take place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say clear IP OSPF process, yes, and let's see if it goes down and comes back up. So it went from full to down. Let's see if it comes back up as part of this configuration. We just have to wait for the adjacency to negotiate. And like I said, all we're really doing here is we're actually focusing on the process of bringing these interfaces up and, and actually taking them down for the purposes of doing things like troubleshooting and other configurational focused stuff. So right now, let's see if this actually comes back up. So show IP OSPF neighbor. Now we notice I'm in two way. And that means that I've seen my router ID coming from my neighbor. My neighbor is one and ultimately I've gone from loading to full. So we transitioned through that entire process one more time. Now if I type show IP OSPF database, or show IP OSPF neighbors, we'll see that I am the BDR on the segment. Now, when we get into designated router and backup designated router, what will end up happening is, is I will first elect myself to be a BDR, and then I will look for information that leads me to believe that somebody else is more capable to be the BDR. And then I'll ultimately, if that is not there, I'll transition myself to DR. So what we want to do is we want to see if that actual process actually takes place. But in the interim, while I'm waiting on it, what I want to do is I want to um, take a look at what's going on with regard to reachability. Because if I say ping 1831222 and hit enter, what we'll find here is that I cannot reach that loopback address. So I'm actually pinging from R1 to CSR2 to try to hit its loopback. And the reason that I can't is because of this mismatch process. Now, um, I'm not going to keep waiting. We can see here this dead interval. The dead time, it's cooking down, but the link is not going to die. And ultimately, this guy should transition to a designated router. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off on this. We'll walk through that process when we get into the next video where we're talking about DRs and BDRs. I just don't want to waste a whole bunch of time waiting for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and change this out. I'm going to say, actually, the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at the database before I do anything else. Show IP OSPF database and we look at the outcome of the database and what we see here is, is these net link summaries are still being generated but now they're being generated by R2. Show IP OSPF neighbor and what's happening here is, is he's actually assumed the role of configuration and he thinks that R1 is the BDR. So in this process, th since he is a DR and there's another link out there, this system thinks it's the backup designated router. This interface, show IP OSPF neighbors, doesn't believe in the existence of a DR, so he's not participating. So what we're seeing here is, is this guy is saying that its neighbor is the DR, show IP OSPF interface, G1, and we take a look at this configuration, it says we are the broadcast and it's going to say that we are the designated router. So it did become the designated router. Therefore, it is now top, top creating the type 2 OSA. What I'm going to do is stop that process. Interface G1, IP, OSPF, network, uh, IP, OSPF, network, point, to point. That'll bring the link down. The link should come back up. Show IP OSPF neighbors. And we have our neighbor up. Notice we do not believe in a DR or BDR because we don't need one. And now show, well, we'll just do a ping. 1831222. We should have reachability, which we do. So that walks through the exact process, but now show IP OSPF database, we're no longer going to see a type 2 OSA. Now, one of the things that I do not enjoy or like about this process is what you'll notice here is, is notice my link counts have gone up. 
Now let's look at that. Show IP OSPF database for the router LSAs, and I want to look at the one coming from 0, 0, 0, 2. And what we're going to see here is we're going to have a new interface in here. And this inter interface type is a point-to-point -point interface because I changed its operational state. But what you're going to see here is, is that what once was the transit network, i.e. the broadcast network for that 10.1.12.0, it stays in the table. But it's now listed as a stub network because I'm not going to have a DR. And what I've done is I've actually superimposed this point-to-point -point connection. So that gets some people confused. I suggest you lab it and play with it. But at the end of the day, show IP OSPF database is going to only include router link states. Now, what I want to do is I want to actually continue this process by building area two on CSR2 and CSR3. So let's walk through this process. We'll get the links up. We'll do the advertisement and see if we can get reachability. What you'll learn is CSR2 will actually be able to reach all prefixes on CSR3. CSR2 will be able to reach all prefixes on CSR1. However, CSR1 will not be able to reach prefixes on CSR3. And the reason being is the fact that these LSAs that we're generating, the only ones we're generating right now are type 1 LSAs, do not ever leave these areas. So a process must exist such that I can get information about prefixes in an area to move between areas so that I can get holistic reachability. So let's go ahead and build this peering. You know what? We'll do that peering in the next video. I'll just do a, a second part to this. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this part up. And again, if you have any questions, lab it, build this. It's three routers. There's no reason that anyone could do this in, in even G, in viral, in GNS3, with real devices. There's nothing stopping this lab as far as interconnection. So that's my recommendation. Play around with this idea, build this area, look at the type ones, restrict the generation of type twos. And then when you've got all of that under control and you understand exactly what's happening in the left side of the equation, join me in the next video where what we're going to do is we're going to build the right side of the equation and we're going to look at what's not happening based on what we've done. I'll see you guys over there. Bye-bye.